So there are some more examples of explicit casting, things that were already discussed, and more examples, just plain syntax. There's also this math class that we already kind of used um, in our uh, prior examples. We used math absolute between the difference between two double numbers. We try to uh, use the absolute value of it. So these are more methods inside the math class. Uh, so it's it's very simple if you want to use it. Uh, it's just uh, readily av available to you. By the way, everything f from Java language package does not have to be uh, imported. It's just this import statement right here indicates that this is where math uh, methods are located. But uh, everything that comes from the language package is already included or imported, uh, rather, um, in your source code. So anyway, so some examples. I showed you like a manual way to, uh, to round... Uh, uh, conventionally around uh, a double value by adding uh, 0.5, 0 0.5 to, to the initial value so that the, when the fraction is thrown, the rounding works fine. Uh, but uh, there is actually a method round. So you just pass your value to this round method and it'll do the rounding for you. So it works for both... Uh, floating point numbers like this or something when you see an f attached to the uh, literal uh, fractional number this is a floating point data type remember this will be used as four byte size and without uh, the suffix like this this is a double which is eight byte type so anyway those things work just just fine and you see that the rounding here is that uh, 4, uh, 4 0.49 becomes a 1 if you try to round that and um, 1.6 uh, becomes of course a 2 because it's closer to 2 so it's rounding up and rounding down accordingly to the conventional uh, rounding uh, rules so there is no power uh, operator in the syntax of the language so there is a power function right here or rather method to uh, built into the math library and um, so this is two raised to the second power two raised to the third power and five and five raised to the second power so uh, just uh, remember that uh, this uh, exponential increase of of the number when when you have this this uh, something raised to the power it is very easy to um over overflow the the size of an integer so oftentimes power is fine it works but uh, it um, requires quite large uh, mm, uh, variable to to accommodate the result sometimes so double is um, is the default so this these are examples of like raising to the power and these are the examples <clears throat> Square root, the same thing, just standard square root, you get your result. So I'm not uh, using any of these examples. You can, you can play with them on your own. Max and min, so instead of writing your own comparison operators to say which, which of the values is larger, um, it works just fine by using the max and min built, already built into math uh, package. So here's... Uh, uh, there's an example of generating a random number. <clears throat> let's uh, let's try this. Let's try to. Uh, I'll show you an example of this, just to show you look and feel for uh, for these things. So once again, I'll just uh, move this out of the way and try something like uh, a for loop because this is just something very simple integer index uh, equals uh, zero index index uh, less than say 10 and uh, here in this loop we will increment the index and just print some of these random numbers okay 
just use new line and print a randomly generated number so I just want to show you this like what 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 is it doing for you it's using some sort of pseudo random uh, number generator but if I run it now see that these are all of these values that it generates are in range from uh, from 0 uh, to 1 and these are all fractions so this method random returns back uh, a, a fractional number so then if we multiply it by 100 for example this will give you a window to to place uh, to so this would become then you know 41 81 43 so the the window will be then from 0 to 100 okay so 0 is included but 100 is excluded so it's like a half open range of uh, values between 0 and 100 and then of course uh, oftentimes you just want to uh, perhaps uh, not use a fractional por uh, portion of it of any sorts just use the uh, uh, the um, the whole part of it uh, and uh, for this reason you can just cast it to an integral data type and then uh, we, so here if if we do a conversion for instance to an integer <coughs> right so we can do it um, like this convert this um, to an integer after multiplying this by 100 now notice that when I multiply by 100 I still want to use the double result so this returns this fractional result like this right and then I multiply it by 100 so it remains a fractional like this will be like 18.24 and so forth and then I cast it to an end so let's compare it with uh, with with this new version so you see so these are some random numbers so we can run a few times and you see that the numbers change every time we run it so it's a pseudo random um, sequence like this okay so this is fine uh, and like this is an example of uh, converting it to uh, uh, to an integer and of course this is the for loop uh, for loop has three parts this is initialization statement this is condition and this is increment so if I just add some little space right here and temporarily move this opening bracket down here just want to uh, quickly remind you how this works and what are the recognizable parts of the for loop I just try to give a little extra space to all all of this and so once uh, we have this just to show you that this is called initialization statement right here okay so this portion is initialization initialization statement it executed only once so when we run this program coming top down and so this thing is executed only once okay so this executed only once and then it's complete okay so it never executes again then the next thing that happens is to check this condition just like inside the while loop all right so this is the condition so we move from initialization statement to condition and if condition is true we execute everything that is present inside the body of this loop of course there could be many lines of code inside this loop this is just one uh, print line statement but there could be many more things right so we transition from condition check to executing the loop and when we we're done we're going to execute the increment statement so after this we move on to here and so this will always execute so here I increment my counter or index and then from here we will proceed to uh, checking condition again if the condition is true we repeat right so we just repeat these iterations and we repeat all these uh, steps uh, the same exact way so I just keep doubling this and again we come back to checking the condition and so this way we just keep looping but notice how this is a a mandatory stop in this loop 
right? So this increment will always happen at the end of the loop. So you execute this, uh, uh, whatever is the inside the body of the loop, and then the increment that uh, will happen. And condition is checked before each iteration, before each iteration. To um, mention here also that if um, this condition is false to begin with, like for instance, I initialized it by 100, like this. So 100 is not less than 10. This will never execute. The loop will never enter any 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 of its body statements right here and you just drop out here and then you continue here and eventually so basically you just you never do this initialization happens and then condition is checked condition is not true there is nothing happening anymore and of course this is not done at all because we stop right at the condition but if we loop then this becomes a permanent stop and this is how we loop between once again so these are essentially in a dynamic loop when the loop is is doing something you get the condition then you get this right and then you get this and this is how you transition from here to here and from here to here so this is your loop one two three one two three so something like that